Now let's look at the worst case scenario because that's what you do in situations like this. Look at all possibilities, hoping it doesn't come to the worst. What would a full-blown war between Iran and Israel look like? How do they compare militarily? Their capabilities are very different. Israel is one of West Asia's most powerful militaries and Iran is one of the largest. Whose force is superior? What kind of firepower do they have? And who has a better shot at winning? Our next report tells you. The drumbeats of war are sounding in West Asia yet again. Israel and Iran are in the middle of an escalating crisis. At the heart of it lies a crucial question. If the worst case scenario were to unfold, who will come out on top? Israel versus Iran, whose military might has the upper hand. On the surface, the numbers favor Iran. Iran has a huge population, at least in comparison to Israel. Iran is home to about 89 million people, as compared to Israel's population of about 10 million. So on paper, it's advantage Iran, particularly when it comes to the size of its military. The Iranian armed forces are among the largest in West Asia, with at least 580,000 active duty personnel and 200,000 trained reserve personnel. How big is Israel's military? It has about 170,000 active personnel and 465,000 reservists. So Iran's active personnel is more than thrice that of Israel's. It also has a larger navy, more tanks and armoured vehicles and greater access to fuel. So far, Iran seems to have the upper hand. But there is a catch. Raw data alone doesn't tell you the whole story. Quantitative factors play a role, yes, but so do qualitative ones, like training and advancement of technology. And the nation that comes out on top here is the one with more money, which is Israel. Iran has a GDP of $413 billion, while Israel's GDP stands at $539 billion. This affects their respective military budgets. Reportedly, Iran's is at $10 billion, whereas Israel has a military budget of $24.4 billion. That's almost 2.5 times higher. But the biggest advantage that Israel has is that its military is backed by the United States. America provides Israel with a $3.8 billion annual military assistance. This has allowed Israel to have more advanced weaponry with superior force readiness, making it one of West Asia's most powerful militaries. Let's see how this plays out on land, water and air. In terms of tank force, like the Zulfikar series and the Karar MPT, Iran builds its own tanks. Usually they are based on outdated designs. Then there are T-72s, T-54s and T-55s which are Iranian copies and considered inferior to the Israeli defence tanks like the Merkava Mark IV, which is one of the best armoured tanks in the game. Now let's look at the Navy. Iran's navy is larger than Israel's, but not as robust. Israel's navy has access to American and European suppliers and their advanced missiles and vessels. Now, when it comes to air power, contrary to the numbers trend, Israel's force is larger than Iran's. Its arsenal includes 612 aircraft to Iran's 551. Its primary fighting force consists of at least 66 F-15s, 175 F-16s and 27 F-35 stealth fighters. It's also regarded as one of the best in the world, has about 63 F-4s and 26 F-14s. In comparison, Iran's air arsenal is believed to be aging rapidly. So Israel has superior quality, which is why Iran is using another tactic on the battlefield deploying weapons in large quantities. Iran has a substantial inventory of ballistic and cruise missiles. They are capable of striking targets about 2,000 kilometers away. This puts Israel well within its range. And during the weekend's attack, Tehran launched dozens of explosive-laden drones. These are Iran's pride. They are unmanned aerial vehicles, believed to be shahids, meaning witness in Farsi. These are long-range drones which have been called the AK-47s of Tehran because they are cheap, mass-produced and deadly. Plus, Iran is not without allies. One of its most important is the Lebanese militia, Hezbollah. 
According to Israeli intelligence, Hezbollah's arsenal contains more than 70,000 rockets and missiles, including long-range and precision-guided missiles. But then again, conventional forces aren't the only ones that can be used on a battlefield. Israel is believed to possess the ability to launch nuclear strikes from land, air and sea. Israel has never openly confirmed or denied its possession of nuclear weapons. So Iran has the numbers, Israel has the technology. While you can't predict a clear winner, if this conflict escalates any further, there's no doubt over who will be the biggest loser. The already restive region and its millions of people.